Welcome back, everyone. Episode four of Three Points with Carroll College Basketball. And I'm joined by the second time head coach, Ryan Lundgren, Carroll College Hoops. And holidays just got over. Coach Lundgren, how are you feeling? Yeah, it was good. I mean, you know, we were able to give the guys a few days off this week. Um, we haven't really been able to do that with our schedule being so stringent every weekend. Um, but having that little break before our next games in North Dakota this coming weekend, uh, we were able to let guys kind of go home for the holidays, hang out with their host families, um, catch up on their schoolwork, just kind of recharge their batteries. So got done with a great practice this morning. It was competitive. We got after it. We're in the weight room now. Um, but, you know, guys are rejuvenated and feeling good. We got a week to prep for some tough games. That's always good to hear. And with student athletes, obviously rest and stuff like that, always so important for them. And of course, the school work too. And starting off, our first point is always the last couple games and just cut right to the chase. First career win, for Coach Lundgren, after some, some tough games on the road against a Division One team and then down in Arizona. But you came home, you beat Embry Riddle, I guess. Just how did that feel right when the final whistle blew and you got to get soaked in the locker room afterwards by your team? Yeah, it's always good getting your first career win, um, you know, number one as a, as a college head coach, but also in the Carroll program. So uh, that was special, and I was able to do it and compete against one of my childhood friends who just got the Embry-Riddle job. And, uh, so, you know, that's great to kind of get that monkey off your back, but ultimately it's just another game, and uh, we have much bigger goals and ambitions as the season moves forward. So. Uh, but we played great in that game. You know, we hit 15 threes. We defended the ball really well. We rebounded and controlled the glass at a high level. And then, uh, you know, we turned around the next night and played Corbin, who had just beat Northern. Um, and Corbin, talent-wise, is, is dang near as good as we've seen all year. Um, and I felt like our defense and our ability to rebound the ball and control the foul count really, um, really gave us a chance in that game. We threw the ball inside to our bigs, and uh, we attacked the glass hard. Uh, and, you know, ultimately we stretched the game out late, but I think we won by 17. It was a much closer game than that. We stretched it out with free throws in the last six minutes, but uh, that type of a game was good for us, kind of a back-and-forth game against an athletic team and a team talent-wise that I think will be near the top of the list of teams that we play this year. So, it was a, you know, it was a good opening weekend at home. Yeah, and that, that game against Embry-Riddle, team scores 100, over 100 points, which is always exciting as a coach. <laughs> Hard to hate the offensive effort, but to turn around and, like you said, play a good defensive game against Corbin, that, that's great. <laughs> if you're used to playing offense, then your team can settle down on defense. That's always great. And one player I'm going to ask you about is Kendall Moore, just transferred in this year. It's his first year in the program, and he actually played at Corbin a couple of years ago, so he got to play and win against his former team. And he's kind of been the number two scorer in this offense right behind Andrew Cook. So just what do you like what you've seen from Kendall after coming to the program kind of around the same time you did? Yeah, like you said, I mean, Kendall was the first guy that I signed when I took the job, um, and he was obviously a huge instrumental piece. Um, I really felt like watching last year's team, um, last year's Carroll team, they really needed a true point guard. Um, and, and I think we got that in Kendall, you know. And like you said, he was freshman of the year in the Cascade at Corbin. Um, and then he went to Chipola Junior College, which is one of the top junior colleges in the country, and uh, played on a very talented team. I think 10, 10 of his teammates went Division One off that team. So, um, you know, ultra-talented group. And, and the thing about Kendall is, you know, he's older. I think he's 22 years old or almost 22. Um, he's played at a lot of different levels, and he's had success. Uh, and, and the great thing about him is his infectious personality and his energy in the locker room and in the huddle, and he holds guys accountable, and people respect him. And, um, he impacts the game in so many ways. You know, he can go give you 20 or 25, but he can also give you, you know, eight points and 10 assists and uh, seven rebounds because he's a sneaky rebounder and defender with his size and athleticism. And, um, you know, ultimately great teams all have great point guards, and I really, I truly feel that he's as good of a point guard as you'll find in the frontier. And um, he, he really just makes his team go with everything he does on both ends of the floor. So we're lucky to have him. Yeah, and as someone who never got to a height taller than someone who could play point guard, I always love to see praise for the point guard. And it's good. I'm excited to watch some more Kendall this year. But after that, the team went out and played Eastern Oregon in a tough game. And I know always fun to gloat on a victory, but obviously a defeat. You don't want to talk about it too much as a coach. But an overtime defeat, a really uh, tough game, and a tough, always tough to win and always even harder to win on the road against Eastern Oregon. And then turn around, you got a great bounce back win against Walla Walla. So how would you feel like the team fared in those two contests? Eastern Oregon game was really good for us. We hadn't been in a game like that, a true road game where, um, 
you know, things didn't go our way late with, with some of the calls, but also with just mistakes that we made. And that type of film and that learning experience that we can show our guys is invaluable for the long run. You know, would we have loved to take both games on that trip and be four and two right now? Of course. But um, the fact that we, you know, we turn it over 17 times, we missed 12 free throws, we don't shoot very well from the field. Uh, but we dominated the glass. I think we had 24 offensive rebounds, and we held them to a very low percentage, um, field goal percentage. You know, the, our defense and our rebounding kept us in that game on the road. And that's kind of been our message to our guys is if we can be great defensively and rebounding every night, it'll give us a chance even when we don't play our best, which we didn't. Um, but, you know, tough loss. We'd love to have it back. Um, that's just sometimes the way the cookie crumbles on the road. Um, but then we had to turn around the next night. And you know, Walla Walla historically hasn't been a very competitive group, but uh, they've done a great job. This year's team is, I mean, they got some pieces. They got a seven footer who's, uh, he can move, he can finish. Uh, he gave us some problems. And then they got a guard who, who really played well against us too. And uh, they, you know, they battled us for about 25, 28, 30 minutes. Then we kind of opened it up late, ended up winning by almost 20. But um, we were a little bit sluggish coming back off that back-to-back, -back, but it was good for us to kind of have to grind that game out and figure out a way to win on the road. But, uh, you know, going 3-3, three and three, we're 500 going into a, a really tough road matchup at Dickinson against them in Mayville, um, and we feel pretty good about where we are. Yeah, and you, you just hit on the second point is what, what's coming up next for the Saints, and you're right, going out North Dakota, you're playing Mayville State and Dickinson State, two teams. Like I said, what, what do you see out of either of those two teams? Well, they're you know they're very different teams. Mayville, uh, I believe their record is six and two. They've got a pretty good record. They're really talented. They got a lot of junior college kids, a lot of transfers, um, and they just kind of go out and freely play. Um, which those teams are dangerous. You know, they can uh, those type of teams you can you can probably beat by a lot, but you can also get beat by a lot. Um, and they're well coached. Coach Magruder does a great job. I've known him for a long time and. Uh, that game's going to be an absolute battle on Friday night. And then, uh, you know, to turn around and play Dickinson State, who's honestly playing as well as most teams in our region. They went to Tech and won by double digits. Um, and they're just really, really well-coached team. Coach Selvig does a great job, and um, obviously they're at home. So, you know, we go on another road trip, and um, there's two ways to look at it. You know, you can hang your head and say, you know, woe is me. we got to play on the road again, but but ultimately – um, to be tested against good teams on the road in the non-conference is going to prepare us really well for, for a, a grueling uh, frontier conference schedule. So um, we're looking forward to it. You know, not looking forward to the eight-hour bus ride, but uh, the games will be fun. They're, they're two really good teams. So. Yeah, and obviously road tests are good for the team at the end of the year, too. And then Coach Selvig, a name that people follow basketball in the state of Montana will know as a son of legendary head coach. Robin Selvig out there, Derek Selvig coaching yeah. Dickinson State. But finally, that leads to long bus route. I guess that kind of leads into my final question um, and the third point. So let's say your team's getting ready to play a, re a really big game. Uh, it's on the road, whether it be a conference rival, conference tournament, maybe even an NAI tournament. And they stick you, I know sometimes they say, oh, your team can go practice in the gym or shoot around or you can hang out here. They stick you in a movie theater with your team and you got a couple hours maybe. What movie are you going to get your team to watch, you're going to put on for them? It doesn't have to be a basketball movie, but what movie do you want your team to watch before a really big game to maybe get them motivated? Well, that's a great question. You know, and the wor uh, this is the worst question to ask me because I'm not a movie guy. But, uh, I, you know, I think with this team, and this is a very cliche answer, but I would say Glory Road because, uh, you know, that team was well coached. They were tough. They fought through adversity. And I honestly think there's a ton of parallels with this group. You know, they're just – there's going to be more talented teams. We have plenty of talent, but there's going to be more talented teams we go up against. But I would be hard-pressed to find a team that, that's got the toughness that we do. You know, these guys just really don't have any quit. And uh, – you know, whether we're up 20 or down 20, they're competing until the final whistle. And, and I tell them every day, like, you know, our non-conference schedule is going to be tough, and there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. But if you guys just stick with it and you keep chipping away at it every day, um, your grit and your determination is going to shine through ultimately. So, um, you know, that, those are things you just can't teach, and I feel like this team has that. So that, that would be my movie choice. That's a great. That's a great answer. I like that a lot. Um, and yeah. Well, so good luck next weekend when the team goes out to North Dakota State or <laughs> North Dakota State. North, well, yeah, the state of North Dakota. Yeah. Um, and then of course, uh, I'll talk to you in two weeks. Thanks, Coach Lundgren. Sounds good. Thank you.